Welcome back friends. Today we will learn about the circuit breaker pattern. So for example, let's suppose we have order service. Order service trying to communicate to the card service. Order service is responsible for placing the order and the card service is responsible for maintaining the card of a user. And due to some reason, the card service is unable to respond. This could happen because of various reasons. There could be a network failure or there could be an issue with the service itself. It could be a code issue, a data issue, a memory issue or maybe the environment on which the service is running has an issue. In such situations, what would happen is that if the order service continues to call the card service, you know, this continuous hitting is wasting valuable compute resource on the order ser service side and if the card service is in an inconsistent state then you know it might add products in the card in an inconsistent way with some wrong information which we don't want so it could lead to cascading failures and it can also cause the subsequent request to slow down because of these problems so this is where a circuit breaker can help us. It is deployed as an individual service and it monitors requests going from one service to the other. Now it has three states, a closed state, a open state and a half open state. A closed state is like a happy scenario when the call service is responding perfectly and we are, the calling service receives a proper response. A open state is when the call service is under a failure and it is unable to respond there is some problem so circuit breaker is open in this case the request is redirected to some other service or some default message is sent or some error message is sent basically the connectivity is broken between the call service and the calling service half often it's like when the circuit breaker is trying to check whether the failed service has recovered if it, it has recovered, it will change the state to the closed state. If, if it has still not recovered, it will keep this change as open state. So suppose the order service is trying to call the card service and we have a circuit breaker in between. So we have set a threshold as 10 and we have set our, our timeout as 15 seconds. So initially when the circuit breaker is in closed state and the card service gets called successfully, it will remain in closed state. But if there is a failure, the circuit breaker will still remain in closed state until the threshold is crossed. So for the initial values, for example, n is equal to 2, it will remain in closed state. But when the failures increase, for example, n is equal to 11, what it will do, it will change the state of the circuit breaker to open state. Now the connectivity between order and card service has been broken and whatever fallback mechanism we might have implemented will come into picture. Now from the open state, it will wait for the timeout limit and once the timeout has crossed, it will move to half open state where it will check whether now the card service is healthy again and responding correctly or not. If it is responding optimally, it will change the circuit breaker state to closed again. And if the failure still persists, it will keep the circuit breaker state as open. So this way, the circuit breaker pattern helps us achieve the following things. It helps us build a more resilient system, which is more fault tolerant. And then it helps us gracefully handle our failures by sending proper error messages or running some fallback services. And then it also monitors our communication between services. And it helps us save valuable CPU cycles and network resources. So friends, we hope that you liked our explanation of the circuit breaker pattern. So thank you for watching and do subscribe to our channel for more such videos.